Okay, activates and moves back from here. Is out of command. Heavy cavalry move forward here. Fortunately, they don't have enough movement to move into the wood, being out of command. Um, so the activation goes over to the Russians. Four. So that's one activation. So a bit of an emergency happening here. Um, bit of an emergency happening here. This sector's fine. Can't really activate to make much gain there. So I think the best thing is to activate. We could activate the center to respond to this, but maybe, yeah, we need to make sure that does happen. Okay. Well, I was just going to say leave it to later, which could be fatal in case they never activate. So Saxon's activating. Um, he's got reserve division here. Travelling by the road, one, two. He can move that far. Um, unfortunately the cavalry, yeah, I skipped the, I shouldn't have skipped the bombardment segment, should I? Um, there's no charges because the cavalry are too close. Don't know the opportunity for charging. And so these, these are in the center there. So in the bombardment phase, those would fire. Getting no hits. There's two of those, that's four dice hitting on a five or six. Um, so those are going to remain there. We need to plug that hole there. These are sent units out of command. They could move once. Hmm. This centre, long divisions far back. So essentially, what we're going to do then is these are going to move. These cavalry are moving up on the rise, so that they can. Well, they couldn't charge through the town. They'll move down here. Hopefully, gaining charges there. Cossacks will move one, two, three. No, not enough movement, so the Cossacks will have to stay here. These cavalry will move back here. Moving across the corner, not across the tooth, go out the slope. These ones will go here. Now they've got their flank open, but we've got some Cossacks there. Perhaps put the Cossacks in there. These cavalry should stay there. Guard the flank. Um, so that's a risk that we protected there. So no attacks. Okay. And we go back to the French five again. That's one activation. They've got the headquarters and Sue to activate. Headquarters don't need to do much, so we will activate Sue. We have to activate even if we don't do anything with them. I think he's just going to draw back. Yes, cavalry one, two, three along the roads. Covering himself here. And he's got lots of cavalry here. Um, attached to him. Which are now a bit wasted. They they, they brought them on, attached them to him for defensive purposes. It's a shame they couldn't. It's too late to unassign, reassign them quickly to send them through here. I don't think there's any great targets here because you, they couldn't ch charge through the swamp. The salting will be slow, maybe decimate them from the artillery. So that's Sue down. Back to the Russians. Six, so that's no activation. 
still got three formations I want to activate. Apparently gets another, activates his headquarters. Which essentially are these and himself. Oh, so these, this artillery fellow, one, two, three, four, was on his way here to assist bombardment. Okay, I think he's wasted. This aide de camp was to replace the Hopal who died at 10 a.m. in cavalry action. One, two. He's a bit far away anyway um, from the cavalry. And Napoleon himself is going to move up there to, th to try and stay within range of. Murat, but who's just out of range. So I'll put Napoleon there. He's still in range of his still in range of his headquarters. Okay. Um I think that works. And back to the Russians. Excellent, that's a one, which means they get three activations, which is all they have left. Let's do the left first. So that's Ostromon Zvodar Tolstoy. Um, so essentially he's going to be firing off artillery. So he's got one there that's unattached, range of two, so one, two, nothing. He's got his heavies here, there's four of them, and they're firing over at Davu's. One hit, so you can, no, that's um, Hungary has, isn't it? Yeah. So he's freshly. Come on, division gets heavy artillery bombardment, loses a step. And I think I forgot to roll for that centre artillery before, didn't I? Okay. No, I think I didn't, and they didn't get any hits. Okay. So that's the left. See how quickly this game can go each turn. Activate the headquarters. We try not. Russian artillery park is, activates very slowly. These ones are not going to get, I'll just roll for them. They're not going to get assigned at all this game. I don't think the headquarters needs to do any changes except for he's got loads of spare leaders here, but no, um, for those are replacement leaders essentially, but no units you could put in here. He can't even, <laughs> hasn't even decided to activate his, assign his artillery to someone else. I don't think they can move at all until done, so they, to himself, or order them up there, why not? Doesn't do it. So we go over to the right, it's going to be up to him. That's centre, this is right. Um, he's got some reserve artillery assigned before to him now. He could send them up on this rise. It's their horse artillery, nice and swift. But I should do it in the correct order, shouldn't I? So cavalry charges, no. Bombardment, they're facing the wrong way. One, two, They're just going to move, so no bombardment, movement, so they turn, those moving up to there. And the, he takes some artillery over and goes with them, an artillery officer. And then the cavalry on the right, one, two, a 
can't quite make it up the rise, but they're going to move over here. Okay, put them together. Try and help. I said their quarters. Yeah, for the, the, they could be assaulted next turn. I should have moved them back. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, well that's what I did. Um, well that artillery could have bombarded there. Okay, no hits. Okay, so that is all of them activated. That's the end of the penultimate turn. So we will check for rallies now. He's actually far enough away to attempt a rally. Roll under his morale. It's very low, so no. And that I think is the only one. So then we move... Uh, sorry, that's recovery, not rally, I think. That's, yeah, momentum does not really matter. So we move on to the eighth turn. We'll check for the weather. Okay, no particularly inclement weather, no reinforcements. Uh, that unit's off. There's no way, to, there's no provision that I can find for bringing units back on board. But I don't think he's going to count against the losses. And the Russians get the initiative and they roll a 1, which means they have a super 3 activations. Which is going to be this all-important sector. The centre, which have moved to the far left. The left, some centre there. And the headquarters move them out of harm's way. Um, so let's do the centre first. So the centre's there. He's just got... His units here in command. So uh, we start with cavalry charges. Assigned reserves and unassigned units. So there's none of that going on. Um, cavalry charge. So yes, we want them to go one and two. So these cavalry are charging into here. That's quite a lot of cavalry against quite a lot of cavalry. Does that gain us anything? I mean, it just protects them from cavalry assault. They could still be charged from up here. They can't charge us. Yeah. There, they can't move on a corner on the flank of us and Jason enemy. We could, though. Let's just do it for the hell of it. So, um, just to see how 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and technically the 13. So, they hit on a 5 or 6. Because I got lots of heavy cavalry, we will take our losses first. But it's not worth it, no. That would just be. It's that interesting thing in this is that um, the defender fires first in the cavalry charges, so unless you're hitting someone in the flank, which you can't do with the small counters, um, you're going to take a lot of losses before you can deal any damage. So that's not worth it. So no cavalry charges. Bombardment. So four from here. That's one hit. So this long counter goes down. You have to bombard the nearest unit in range. So for example, I suppose I could have chosen them because they're adjacent. Um, center. There's no one in their line of sight, so movement. One. Put them up on the rise there. Move these back I'll move commander all right move these these ones back the long counter they got reinforced with some artillery withdraw no those cavalry have to stay there to protect their flank now these cavalry could charge up the slope they're not really going to want to do that Cossacks are fine there. They then can stay there in reserve. Um, 
So that's the center. Now we'll do the left wing. There again, it's just going to stand and bombard. So these four against them. One, two, three. They're heavy. So that disastrously bombardment can be devastating against the visions. That's three down. So the temptation now is to launch a, an assault, a counterattack against that weakened division. But um, then the French could move into the woods, but a knight would fall. So that's what we will do. We don't have anything to lose. They've already activated, but these ones can go. Hang on, I'll just do this bombardment. Okay, two hits. Against cavalry. And, oh dear, ugly out. Takes a hit. Let's see if leader lost. No. Ah, oh dear, poor French. Oh, hang on. They were in town. So that's not going to be reduced. So no. Okay. They would only take half of those. Oh yeah, so it would be the long counter first. But the artillery will not go down. Okay. Okay. Um, I thought I'd just finished videoing this because it's the end of the game. That artillery has no effect. Now for this assault. So it would be four dice. No terrain modifiers against three, four, five, six, seven. Against seven. No, because we're going to take the last out. So they stay there. Um, and then the headquarters activate. Retreat back. And finally manage to activate their last artillery, which they will put up on the rise to protect them. Right in, one pointing this way, one pointing. No, both pointing through there. And now we go to the French. They get one activation. So the game-wise question is where can we possibly incur any losses on the enemy long counters? These ones are all weakened. Quite interested in. Oh, I don't know. So, cavalry charge are blocked up slopes. That's a shame, or else Marat would go up there. No, I beg your pardon, this is just a rise. A slope is a steep slope, this, so you can charge up a rise. So in that case, all of this cavalry, not this one, can charge up here. Let's do it. So I think, um, I think I can do a grand charge. Yes, um, there's no counter, but I had to make one. Grand charge. So this adjacent one can go up. So they're going up here. Now they're going to take fearsome losses, but maybe they can have an effect. He was in there, wasn't he? So, one, two, three, four, and six. So that's ten, hitting on a five or six. Oh, look at that. That's seven dice. One loss. And then the rest will get to hit. Unfortunately, we don't have any heavy cavalry or elites, or else we'd be hitting on majority of those will be hitting on a five or six. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then LaSalle's tactical twelve, thirteen.
and upper rise has no effect on coverage charges so no modifier that's one hit wow five hits first has to come off the long counter so i'm so happy sorry about that. i'm so happy i got a cavalry charge in um uh, so and a, and a decisive one like this so he's lost half the long counter lost half of its present combat strength is that right no because it it lost half of its steps but not its strep points Okay, so as it happens, he started on six, he's down four. Because he had artillery, they soaked up some of the hits. Okay, so he doesn't actually have to retreat, otherwise the cavalry would have moved into the area and uh, would have been able to attempt pursuit. Oh, and I just discovered that horse artillery can join a, a charge, so I'll just roll for them. Any more losses? No shame. Okay, so I think essentially that means that all of this cavalry is in, bunched up in that area. Okay, that was the grand charge. The Marat is moving up there, so that's... Now I've forgotten how many activations the, the French had. I better just roll again. I rolled a three, so they get two. I think it was actually three activations, wasn't it? So after Murat's cavalry, I'm going to activate the guard and Agria's seventh division. And then that, I won't need to activate any more because this is going to be decisive because there's not going to be any long unit losses on this side of the field. Um, the uh, Russians have activated all their formations on this side of the field. I could possibly, I'll check that, activate Davu because he could possibly go in for an attack there. But against forest and placed infantry with cannons, that's not going to be a good idea. So it's down to these French units to see if they can do anything. No, but I forgot, it doesn't really matter because it is random, isn't it? So, you know, if I... It could have been three or two. It, either way, it doesn't matter. It's not. I'm not um, playing a competitive game. Um, so let's start with the guard. And um, they do have cavalry here. One, two. They're too close to here to charge. They could charge up the slope here. Let's do it because they will not count against. Um, now, I, I did search rules. I thought it was something about you can't charge through a long unit, but just looking again, I couldn't find it. I don't know if that was in some errata that I got somewhere else. Um, but otherwise, I think you can pass through as long as you don't violate stacking restrictions, which will work here. So we've got them versus they got five, six. I think the other readers don't count if it's not on bombard, so that's six dice hitting on five or six, so they take two losses. So they're going to be hitting three, four, five, the tactical of the leaders makes it seven. One, two, just one hit because they're not, so they Send him one hit has to come off the long counter first. So who's that center? Essen. Okay. That's good. But then so then the those cavalry end their charge here. And the guard, they're not bombarding, they've got all attached folks. So these ones are moving into this area. And 
there's not quite enough room for them to attack that way. I think I could put them there. They can fit like that, yes. And so they can attack into there. Those ones are attacking into there. Now this is a flank attack, so they don't get to fire back. So we have six, seven, eight, nine. As simple as that. One, two hits. So they will try and, they will retreat on one. They will take the first. So Suvorov, where's he? He's from. Suvorov, so he comes off. So he takes one hit. Oops. And actually, we better stay one. Another one from the artillery. Um, it, it doesn't really matter if they stay or not because this is the end of the game. Um, and then these ones going in. That's just just. Hmm, they could actually move here and attack. Flank there. There's nothing to stop them doing that. So yeah. We'll say they move one here. And attack from that flank. So that's four, five, six, seven. Two hits. One. And bang goes the artillery. So that was the guard. Now Algria's core. He's got this fella and this fella. That's Forest, so it's just going to be him going in essentially. So he would move up to here. For, that's for the sake of argu argument's sake. Take off that. I'll just quick roll for. No, no effect. They didn't take it. So, um, okay, so the Jaegers hold off there and the skirmishers. Agrio moves into here with some cavalry. He's going to be going in on the assault and it's combined arms force. So let's just roll for the defenders first. Um, two, three, four, five, six. They should have retreated, shouldn't they? <laughs> well, even then they would have been uh, able to be assaulted. So six. They get one hit in on the long division. So he goes down to E. That's a terrible week. But still. One, two. So with the commander's tactical, he's on two, so that's one, two. And I can only attach, just remember, I can only attach two artillery per long division, so these ones would have been unattached and bombarded first for one hit. That would have taken one of the artillery off. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hitting on five or six, because Bind arms, one, two, three, four, four hits. So that's going to take, bang, that's completely wiped out that division in a matter of moments. And they will retreat off up to there. Oops, artillery can't retreat. I think what artillery can. Just the cavalry gets away. And look at that. So, um, Oglio should roll for his possible leader loss. 11, yes! The last charge of the day, and he's down. Poor chap. Or 11 or 12. So, that's it. End of the game, I will count up the losses. We see that um we can see now that I'm sort of getting the hang of the assaults how it, how you send in your charge 
move in your assault combined arms and they can cause quite hefty losses quite quickly. Um, so the, the Russians are extremely pressed now. Night falls, they've still got the woods here. The French have broken through in their centre and their left is holding some rises here. Headquarters has had to move back. So essentially they would retreat in the night. The only question is how much damage has it caused to the French forces? The Prussians have come on but were too far away to save the day thanks to Sui and um, then Ney being here. Um, let's see. So in the basics, this is how the loss has worked out. We have here on the uh, Russian left, it's, that's too long, Kainsworth. This um, division was completely decimated. You see there's a central division. And these ones took some losses on the um, Russian right, had some loss, and the Prussians actually lost some. On the corresponding side for the French, Sue's Corps, you see, had completely decimated one division. Also took some losses from Laval. And in the attack here, um, Davu uh, lost the most. So two divisions completely decimated, one down to very low strength. Um, and um, then Augria also lost some here, and the guards, so one decimated, and the guards lost those. Now that, there's some flippings on the board which I had to count up for the final count. So the final count is 32 long unit losses on the French side against 19 on the Russian Prussian side. So we're looking on the Russian, I'm playing the two day battle as you know but you use the battle victory conditions for it. Now so they lost, they didn't they lost more than 17 long infantry steps, so they just lost less than 20 and then fl flicked at least 12 on the uh, French. So we, we call that for the Russians a minor defeat, which is unfortunate because for a decisive victory they inflict 30, which they did on the French, but lose no more than 12. So between this and this... It's, uh, according to the reading of it, it's either a minor defeat or any other result is a major defeat. So I think that's a minor defeat. So the fact being that they were excellent at destroying the French, but they took so many losses themselves that are unacceptable to keep them, I suppose, as a force in being. Let's check, though, um, on the, the French long victory conditions. So, lose no more than 31. Now, they lost 32. So, they didn't get it. They could have won a decisive victory, potentially, on losing only 16. But they would have, because they inflicted 19. But that doesn't figure. So, any other result, so any more than 31, they're going to result in a defeat, which essentially is a draw. We had a defeat for the French well, and a minor defeat for the Russians. So I don't know. I suppose the Russians are a little more happy. But a defeat is a defeat. <laughs> Neither side gained what they want to, wanted to. And the French lost in relative terms a bit more. I wonder if Friedland ever happened. And did the... And the uh, Treaty of Tilsit occur. We shall have to leave that as an open question. But so that's the end of this. I like this um, series very much. It's a bit, I say, it's a bit strange from the area because you have sort of certain anomalies in the sense that um, a unit, a long unit, has to fit within an area. It cannot overhang a boundary, and so. Some areas really dictate how you can arrange it. For example, that one could go like that way, which means it has a flank here and a flank here. If it wanted this as its flank, it, and that as its flank, it couldn't do it because it would be overhanging the edge. So it's constrained how it forms up in this area. So the areas determine how, how you sort of arrange 
the unit actually but on the other hand let's say like in this area you can only see it that way which as we can see is nowhere near the, the hamlet um, terrain depiction but um, as I understand it that sense of him being in the hamlet so he's gained a sensory benefit for that and even if say you say oh he moves along that road it has the count of moving through the hamlet itself so there's a bit a few quirks like that which I don't really like. I wish they'd put a bit more finesse in the terrain rules so showing that you could choose to move along that road and then it, you, you can either be in the hamlet, say if part of you is in it then you're all in it or not in the hamlet. That would cause a bit of a complication. I guess they didn't want to go there but I would have been satisfied with that extra complication just to make it to make everything gel a bit more because with hex you don't have this problem because you know you in a hex you're either in hex you're not and the hex is either the certain terrain type or not it's a lot more clear there can be some you know how much depending on if it's 90 percent terrain covering the hex etc there can be arguments that way but I, you're in the hex and it's that terrain at the end of the day but in here you're in the area and although you're nowhere near that terrain and the terrain depictions show quite different possibilities um, and your positioning has to determine where you are in a certain possibility in relation to the actual terrain that we can see but then it doesn't but then the whole of it the hamlet fills the terrain so that's uh, so strange but other than that I think this is a great system it plays really smoothly and uh, this is a difficult bloody battle to play out. Like I say, I think the French are essentially uh, fighting against time. They should have um, organised their cavalry and charges better, clearing um, away, delaying units for infantry assaults and much earlier on so that they could achieve this kind of breakthrough and get the win they want on the uh, Russians before they had lost so many other units. So, there we go.